Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. The next topic is about the medication adherence and healthcare costs that will be presented by our clinical pharmacist, Dr. Muhammad Mazhar, who got his PharmD from the University of Karachi, and he's a diplomat of Pharmacy Leadership Academy of the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Currently, he is the coordinator for Clinical Pharmacy Services and the Drug Information Center. Please welcome Dr. Muhammad. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope my voice is clear from here or it's clear. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Ms. Saya introduced me, my name is Muhammad Mazhar. I'm clinical pharmacist in King Khalid Eye Specialist Hospital. And uh, thank you very much for uh, attending this grand rounds. Since I belong to the pharmacy department, so uh, I'm very glad that I'm presenting my department. And also I'm thankful to the uh, KKESH for giving us this opportunity to share our uh, expertise and knowledge with our other healthcare colleagues. Uh, the topic for this session for the grand round, as it says, the medication adherence and healthcare cost. One reason for selecting this topic is that it, it is a generalized topic and it can be related to all the specialization and not only in ophthalmology, even in me medicine and it can relate to other fields also. So during this, the course of next uh, few minutes, uh, you you can you know imagine some of the scenarios which you face in your daily routine that why your patients are not being able to achieve that therapeutic goal which you are planning for them. Uh, there could be some uh, reasons which are uh, which are avoidable and which could be tackled without even doing some medical interventions. So in the next few minutes, we'll go through this journey for the understanding the medication adherence. Uh, also, we'll touch something about the cost issues that how come the cost can impact or the non-adherence can impact the overall treatment cost. So adherence of medication can impact on patient outcome more than the treatment itself. Uh, in some of the, uh, I will share in the, in future slides, and I, I went through many literatures, you know, it, I found 50%, 40% adherence. It means out of 100 patients, only 50 or 30, 40% patients are completely following the, the treatment plan. Uh, but it, it varies with the different specialization, but we will see uh, in coming slides. So types of non-adherence, we will discuss some basics of uh, and also the adherence in ophthalmology, uh, impact of non-adherence on healthcare cost. Uh, we'll talk about medication adherence cost es estimation framework, which would be a, an interesting topic because this, uh, there is a special research methodology related to the cost evaluation in terms of medication adherence. And uh, through my, the literature evaluation that I was going through this, uh, the preparation of this presentation, uh, this, the cost evaluation analysis uh, has been um, not a very topic of interest for clinicians because it has some economic calculations. And uh, But if you see the outcome of these studies, it helps to make the policies in terms of healthcare treatment. You know, the, the guidelines which we create, the clinical guidelines, it helps to create the, the, to manage the treatment. But the cost analysis helps you select the specific treatment modalities that we will see in, in this uh, in the next few slides. And also the research opportunities, which probably it needs a collaborative effort to go through uh, this uh, research in terms of the cost analysis of the, because of the non-adherence. So medication adherence refers to overall commitment by patient to adhere to the dosage and time of taking prescribed medication as recommended by the healthcare provider. And the degree to which the person's behavior corresponds 
with the agreed recommendation from the healthcare provider. This is the basic definition, common definition of adherence. By the way, you may hear some similar terms like compliance, also persistence. So these terms are interchangeable in the literature you will find, but mostly in the scientific literature, you will find the word adherence, medication adherence. So medication adherence has a substantial impact on the length and the quality of life, uh, health outcomes and health expenses. Uh, just to have a quick background that the economic impact, although there are not too many comprehensive economic analysis in terms of medication adherence or treatment failure that lead to the cost expenditure, but some of the analysis which I, I went through that medication uh, non-adherence is a significant issue which results in significant illness progression, death, and increased healthcare expenses to patients and even patients' families also. And annually, 50% treatment failures, non-adherence, 25% of hospitalization, and around 125,000. Uh, by the way, for, as a healthcare workers, please bear me if I go wrong with the millions and billions. Probably we are not good at millions and billions. So if I skip to zero, so you can uh, just apologize for that. So and can directly trace to non-adherence, which means that up to 50%, as I said in the beginning, 30%, 50%, actually 80% is considered as very good adherence levels in, in patients. So even we did one study in uh, Kekesh from the pharmacy department for one of the uh, biologic in, the, in, the, in patients. And even with a small uh, sample size, we found almost like 48% adherence that patients were taking the medication as per the plan. So 50% is generally the number which is uh, common in all the disease management for the patient adherence. Now coming to the basics like types of adherence, which you, you may notice during your uh, interaction with the patient. Uh, first, we call it the primary which is to the left, uh, which also we call it the non-fulfillment, which means that the prescription is not uh, received or patient didn't even collect his medication. That is the basic first non-adherence way. The second, which is the secondary non-persistence, which means that the patient stopped taking medication after initiating the treatment. So the treatment has initiated, but after some reason, some time, the medication was stopped by the patient. And uh, rarely intentional, usually arise from the miscommunication or the resource limitation. The word resource here could be the cost also, but in, in hospital settings or healthcare settings where the, there is universal uh, health coverage or insurance, uh, resource could be uh, some other factors also. For let's say for the patient to arrive to the healthcare facility to take the medication, it could be even the patient came, but for some reason, the patient didn't collect the medication, uh, long queue and what. So this also comes in the limitations. And the third type of non-adherence, which is generally classified as tertiary, which is non-confirming, which means medication is not taking, is not being taken as prescribed. Uh, missed, this could be a missed dose, wrong dose, wrong, even um, wrong way of administration, subcutaneous injection, they are not taking it in the right angle or at the wrong time. And we have seen literature where patients have taken uh, weekly doses into daily doses because they could not understand. And uh, recently I had an encounter of counseling one of the patients for his prednisolone uh, pulse, no, not the pulse, the, the tapering therapy. So usually I don't counsel the patient because of language barrier, but uh, for some reason I, I was, uh, the patient could understand my uh, language. So. When I was counseling him, I, you know, I could see his eyes and I could understand that he's thinking, he's questioning that what, are, what am I saying? One week, take 10 tablets, then from the next week, take nine tablets. So I could imagine that once this patient go home, how much he will remember, even I'm writing on the paper for him, each and everything, how much compliance he's going to have it that, uh, that we are expecting him to follow. So that is also uh, the unintentional non-compliance is also non-adherence is also one big uh, problem. In addition to these three types, uh, as I said about the intentional and the non-intentional. So intentional is like deliberate decision by patient not to take their uh, eye drops, for example, and this can be attributed to, to the side effects. So glaucoma is a very uh, common example. 
And when I was going through the literature review, uh, I would say 95% of the literature related to ophthalmology was related to glaucoma and eye drops specifically. That patients not taking it properly, uh, they don't see the blindness coming and they are more worried about the side effects of the eye drops that they're having right now and they decide to quit the medication. And even sometimes, you know, we, we, in the literature I saw that patient says that, okay, ultimately the blindness is coming, but right now this, uh, the pain of the side effect is not bearable and they skip the medication. From the unintentional non-adherence, it's a passive process, which means that it can arise from poor installation technique or physical uh, cognitive limitations like, uh, you know, neuromotor disorders, Parkinson, that patients are not being able to instill the drop properly. Uh, I went through some literature, so adherence to in, in the ophthalmology field, and believe me, there is a lot of margin of work. I feel it's uh, um, very difficult to find a very good comprehensive paper in ophthalmology in terms of adherence and cost limitations. So there is a great amount of opportunity for, for the research in the field of ophthalmology in terms of the adherence. So here, in, this adherence in medical treatment and its determinants amongst the adult Saudi glaucoma patients in Riyadh city. So it was around 263 randomly selected glaucoma patients. And the adherence rate in the second point, the subjective adherence rate to glaucoma was about 72%, which is quite high actually as compared to the other literature. But as per this study limitation, they had some limitations, so it was 72%. And from, this was the medication. Now from the follow-ups or the their appointments follow-up, uh, like they were abided by with the, their follow-up appointments with ophthalmologists, it was up, up to 87%. Now this, uh, the reason I'm sharing this number is uh, probably this is the only paper where I found this high number of adherence. Although in later on in the paper, they mentioned about some limitations in data collection. So there could be some, uh, I, I feel 10 to 15% variation in the result. But still, this is from thermology. It was uh, it's a very decent adherence. Now, um, it's it's it was like a review article which I found some thermology related disease like uh, glaucoma and corneal disease. So, among the glaucoma patients, the non adherence ranges from thirty to eighty percent, and it could worse if the treatment uh, goes beyond three years, as thirty seven percent of patients continue actively refill prescriptions. And by four years, it dropped to 15%. So as long as the treatment goes on, you know, the adherence is also going down. And non-adherent glaucoma patients, uh, the 66% was classified as unintentional, which means that they either they are using the wrong way of uh, installation or either they are skipping the doses unintentionally or they are uh, closing the eye or not closing the eye properly. That is causing the, the non-adherence. And in the, from the dry eye disease, uh, more than 60% patients who were prescribed with cyclosporin and uh, lipitic rest eye drop discontinued therapy within 12 months. And nearly 50% of patients in a dedicated a dry eye disease were lost to follow up. So this is one, one literature I found about the, the corneal eye disease. In addition to this, from the NTVGFs, which is you know the most, uh, it's a monthly treatment, sometimes two monthly, three monthly. So from this uh, meta-analysis, which was around like uh, 400,000 patients, I guess, 400,000 patients across 52 studies were analyzed and the treatment regimens including monthly and the treat to extend. So the patient led non-adherence varied from 17 to 35% for this NTVGFs treatment. And from this study, the reasons which they defined or they describe of a non-adherence were starting with the dissatisfaction for the treatment result by the patient. So they, you know, they are they get frustrated that the, the desired impact is not coming after two three injections. Uh, financial burden, in if if they are paying by themselves. Also the the age difficulty in booking appointments and then travel distance and lack of time. So these are all including the direct and indirect cost. They were leading to uh, non-adherence for this non uh, NTVGF medications. Now the factors influencing the medication adherence. Uh, the next slide, it's a slightly busy slide, but I will just have a quick, uh, I think it's readable, yes. So cover five basic 
parameters of non adherence starting from the social and, and economics social economic which it could be uh, patient is not able to understand properly the communication between the healthcare worker language has mentioned one of the barrier the literacy although in many of the literature uh, the literacy was not very much you know uh, significant in terms of adherence even the patient which low literacy they were very much more adherent than patient who were more literate lack of health insurance or the the financial issue and also the the cost the other impact was the healthcare system that could the patient uh, uh, is not comfortable with the healthcare setting so that could lead to some non adherence uh, long waiting time as i said before lack of uh, like uh, they're not been able to continue their treatment uh, restricted formularies this is of course the pharmacy job and from the third the condition related which means the lack of symptoms so this is uh, especially in the glaucoma and the anti vgf that the patient expect that once they start the treatment there should be some impact on the treatment but they don't see it and they ultimately they they feel that this medication is not helping them and they, that leads to non adherence the therapy related means the duration of therapy if it's too long the patients get fatigued and they don't continue the, the their treatment and the patient related means if they are not uh, um, i will not say knowledgeable but they are not aware of the disease properly or indication or the impact if they don't take the medication so this also leads to uh, non adherence and from the if you see this cycle from if patients start with a poor medication adherence with poor health outcome then it can have increased services utilization so it means a patient will come to the er also then he will make like visit to the clinic more often he may get admitted more exposure to the hospital and then other diseases infection so it you know the cost just keep on multiplying and the increase healthcare cost and also the the cost is passed to the patient and patient means to the family and the community ultimately and one of the article i found in avoidable healthcare cost due to medication non adherence estimated as 500 billion dollars in us which uh, represents 16% of the total healthcare cost so avoidable cost means something which could have been avoided but because of non adherence it happened uh, this literature is about assessing the medication adherence as de uh, defined in quality measures uh, the healthcare utilization especially in the it's related to blood pressure and statin the the medication the the point which i would just want to uh, mention here is about that the odds of disease state control were approximately double if the patient is adherent to the disease so the blood pressure control or the statin levels is better if the patient is more adherent to the disease and also the short term has been proven to reduce the associated cost managing the disease if uh, patient is more adherent to the disease i mean the blood pressure is controlled much earlier or the statin levels are controlled much earlier uh, as compared to patient who not taking um this slide is uh, it just gives an impact of different diseases and for per patient like one patient uh, cost of non adherence per patient per year so as you can see the osteoporosis can go up to 5 uh, 5 500000 no not 500000 it's uh, 50000 uh, us dollars per year per patient so that is the impact you know this all these cost analysis is it's a very detailed analysis they have done but ultimately we don't see it in in front of us because it's it needs some work or some expert calculations but yes this is reality from the glaucoma patients Uh, this study was found that glaucoma patients who did not adhere to the medication uh, their therapy experienced single eye blindness after 19 years as compared to 23 years which for patient who were following their treatment so they were like 5 years before they got the blindness and the cost of medication is a barrier for most patients patients who are paying uh, their cost by themselves these are some of the reasons that uh, from the study which have found that the reasons of incorrect installation of the eye drop so first is a contamination through the contact between the dropper which means that every time the patients uh, are touching the eye the eye tip the the tip of the bottle with the eye that could lead to some infection also missing the eye or not being able to aim the uh, properly the drop and difficulty in squeezing the bottle 
also the difficulty in aiming and dispensing more than one drop failure to close the eye after installation so whatever the the eye drop goes to the eye it, it's uh, it's washed out so the different ways which means that even these small factors are leading to non adherence and all these things are, are not in front of the healthcare worker so patient especially in the ambulatory care patient is taking the medication and patient is at home and uh, and we expect that patient is following the 100% instruction and he's uh, so ultimately we see that if the adherence is not good the impact of the disease or the disease outcome will not be good now how to assess the medication adherence this is we are now coming to more of practical approaches in terms and we can apply this to our practice in research that assessing the medication adherence uh, there are five or six ways the, the the first the most common way is through scaled or validated questionnaire one of the most common example oh, this red color is very bright it's not here so it one is the moriski scale which is i will show in the next slide how it looks uh, it is a set of eight eight questions that you will ask to the patient and you will get a percentage that how this patient is adherent or not adherent also patient interviewing you can do medication refill monitoring uh, lab values and pill count uh, i will explain these uh, in the next slide so in this these are the way we can do the medication adherence so measure of drug for example the direct assessment we are we are assessing the patient directly it's uh, it's through the blood levels which is very not very practical uh, especially in eye drops management it's, it may not be a uh, suitable but in other diseases it, that we can check common example is vancomycin although vancomycin is giving as inpatient so we are not concerned about the adherence but you can check the patient the blood uh, the medication level in the serum or the blood and you will know that okay the patient is taking the medication the second which is the indirect way is the pill count which means we whatever medication we give to the patient in the next appointment patient will come with the medication and we will count whether he has taken the medication as per his uh, the duration or not electronic database uh, it's it's easy to use uh, which means that it's uh, more of uh, through the system we can even without interviewing the patient we can get the information that patient is taking the medication properly or is he taking the refills at time on time the last is the self reported questionnaire which i was talking about where we ask question to the patient it has limitation that it could be some uh, reporting bias uh, forgetfulness could also be an option that uh, we may not get the accurate data this is uh, the moriski scale and this scale has been used in some of the glaucoma studies also where they have interviewed the patient with these questions so it's like yes and no some of the you can see some questions like do you sometimes forget instilling your eye drops in the last two weeks was there some day that you forget the eye drop or um, have you ever stopped instilling eye drop because you were feeling worse so these are some questions that are asked Uh, they have some numbers that if the score is between three to five, it means patient is not adherent. If it's more than five, it means patient is adherent. So this is uh, one way of uh, calculating the adherence level of the patient. Now, how to improve the medication adherence? This is more of uh, uh, in, in in addition to our clinical services that how we can make sure the patient is following the instructions properly. So improving the medication adherence, uh, significant economic health and social benefits. or can be realized from the medication adherence so the cost of medication as a major barrier towards adherence which is uh, for some many hospital setting like in ours it, this may not be the case but yes we can uh, for other patients uh, coming from different areas this, this could be a reason that the cost is causing the medication adherence so social determinants like a uh, health boost or the the efforts towards encouraging adherence um, we call it the motivational interviewing the patient or uh, uh, letting the patient understand the disease properly so that they uh, take their treatment seriously also educating the patient employing the technological devices uh, reminders or uh, even some sometimes they are using the sms reminders for the patient to take the medication that's also one way we can uh, improve the adherence The, the role of healthcare uh, also a responsibility the medical adherence falls actually both on the patient and the healthcare workers so we cannot just just like uh, keep our eyes eyes closed that okay we expect the patient will follow the the treatment plan the healthcare provider should be at the forefront in dealing the medication non adherence issue and communication between the patient and the healthcare provider should be encouraged uh, just for your information we uh, 
you know in the pharmacy department we are inshallah planning to have our a new medication adherence clinic and we we aim that inshallah we'll start soon as a pilot project and we aim that patient who are non adherent we can talk to them we can counsel them to improve their medication adherence and this could be for all the specialties inshallah also the treatment can be tailored as the patient needs uh, also the regimens can be simple like once daily of course we cannot always have a once daily regimen but simple as possible that will help the patient to adhere to their treatment now um, i will move to almost the last part of the discussion which is the cost the medication adherence cost estimation now there has been some frameworks design or methodologies to establish the study design in order to estimate the cost of the non adherence so this is one of the paper which in evidence based model to consolidate medication adherence cost estimation uh in in this paper they have spoken about the economic evaluation as the comparative analysis of alternate courses of action in terms of both their cost and their consequences they will actually they are talking about the direct cost indirect cost uh direct medical cost direct non medical cost that needs to be considered when we are doing the overall evaluation so the standardized framework uh, in determining the economic impact also the global uh, medication adherence technology which is technology they are referring to uh very basic interventions that we can help the patient to uh, be more aware of the treatment plan it could be as i said sms alerts could be some uh, reminders email reminders and it is becoming more of a business now that companies are making these uh, tools for the patient so that they can adhere to their treatment the direct cost which they have mentioned in their uh, methodologies it's uh, we all know about the direct cost but they are talking about the resources used to completely attribute to the use of healthcare interventions uh, especially the illness they are talking about and the medical cost of course we can think about the the appointments uh, labs Uh, emergency visits and uh, even the the testings and the uh, and the direct non medical cost uh, they are talking about the uh, transportations lodging family care and clothing all these things which are related to their patient treatment and from the indirect cost analysis it could be due to the loss of life or livelihood or maybe result to morbidity mortality uh, premature death the impact on the family because of the premature death of the the ill patient also the productivity cost that is also calculated in the in the real time uh, analysis like the cost additional cost burden placed on workplaces and employers due to the loss of productivity so a person who was doing some work before because of disease he's not been able to bring that same productivity so the cost is impacted so in actual cost analysis this is also part of the cost analysis now this uh, i found a very interesting um same like uh, you must have heard about the the consort guidelines for the rcts it's like a checklist so here they have a they call it health economic evaluation reporting standards or cheers they have a 28 list of checklist of 28 standards uh, if you are doing this research you can check this go through this checklist to make sure that you have all the uh, the ingredients of that uh, economic evaluations So this is a consolidated consolidated health economic evaluation report standard which we call it the cheers uh, and it has a list of 28 items checklist and the statement is primarily intended for the researchers uh, when reporting economic evaluation for the peer reviewed journals uh, I will show you uh, just a glimpse of these standards which uh, it may not be visible but I mean you can refer this uh, the this cheers standards it's free it's you can easily uh, find it online but some of them it's like they're defining that if you are doing some research it all all these ingredients analysis plan and you can see the the population define uh, the nature of population their economic um, status all thing all these things should be included in this economic analysis so this is one place which i feel that we as healthcare workers in i special hospital there is a plenty of margin that we can work on this and uh, learn this skill or at least take help from the experts and work on this especially the economic analysis of the ophthalmic diseases so the strategies some of them we have already discussed 
to improve this adherence motivational interviewing is one which is um, you know recently i was doing some literature review and some um teacher course to see how we can learn this motivational interview so it's a very interesting topic although you as a health as a physician or pneumologist you do encounter these things daily when you are counseling the patient but it has like more uh social and psychological uh flavor also which which helps a lot early follow up is one way to improve the adherence minimizing treatment cost and therapeutic uh, patient education is also one and reminder as we discussed before and also simplify the treatment now from the motivational interviewing it's a uh, I, I found some very good examples which were um some of them i'm not sure they were actual or they were made but it makes sense uh, one of the example about the motivation interview that for smoking cessation and that the patient was uh, you know the clinician was explaining the patient that hey, this smoking is not good for your health you have a family it will the smoking kills you slowly it, your organs are damaged slowly so the patient said okay i'm not in a hurry if it's kill- killing me slowly so i'm fine with it i'm not in a hurry my friends are having 20 cigarettes per day and i'm having only 10 so i'm already doing good from my part so in this way if we leave the patient there so it means that he has he will have this impression that i'm doing the best thing i can do for smoking cessation but no here we have to and again we cannot you know fight with the patient that no you are doing wrong if we do this again he will be like more firm on this approach so this motivational interview helps us to understand more of the psych- patient psychology that how we can uh, go from the other way and change his mentality about uh, some perspective it means a active reflective listening listening is very important for it and we understand that you know we have 30 patients in a clinic in 3 hours 4 hours so uh, there are some practicalities also that we have to look for you cannot sit with every patient and explain but um, i think with a m- multidisciplinary approach we can delegate this some of the things to other colleagues or healthcare workers explore um, importance and build confidence in the patient and also make change with the with the patient like treatment plan with the patient from all in, explaining them the indications effectiveness of the disease safety issue that in case you have this side effect so you have to do this or you have to continue the treatment and adherence also the cost or you know how well the patient can tolerate injection or oral therapy whatever the patient can uh, tolerate well we select that treatment now understanding the patient story this is what i was telling you that it's how patient is understanding the disease so if a patient feels that he has a glaucoma and the blindness is coming in the next 10 years so he may feel that okay it's 10 years down the road so it's a long time so i can you know avoid the therapy and maybe i can take a break so this is what we have to explain the patient that no if you can delay the 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 worsening of the disease if you take the medication properly now making medication uh taking a habit like as if there this is their routine with the food okay you take the medication you are traveling you take the medication carry a box of medication if you have a medication for refrigeration carry a box where you can keep the medication in proper uh, temperature control also include the family also to remind you that we need to have a medication and have a backup plan in case you are traveling or you miss the dose what you should do um you can call the pharmacy that i have missed the dose should i take the next dose or should i just stop the treatment wait for the next appointment so all these things has to be discussed with the patient now responding to common challenges this is i think your daily routine maybe you, you will be observing these things that patient saying that you know i have, i hate the taking medication or uh, it seems like every time i come to the doctor i get more medications and acknowledging so we have to acknowledge uh, that or appreciate the patient that okay you are taking the medication it's difficult but it's like refocus on why the medication is important and also making them like uh, helping them to take the medication with their routine with the food or you know or help the, take the help of the pharmacist to make your treatment plan and also the patient may say that i cannot tell that really it does anything the patient you know may say that okay the, it's not helping the medication i'm taking but it's not giving any good effect and um, actually it's getting worse and explain acknowledge and explain how some medication uh, medication may take longer time like prostaglandin analogs they take some time to for the action 
now intervention to improve uh, uh, the adherence this study i found its intervention directed towards uh, unintentional non adherence include the simplification of the dosing regimens so here the uh, it's a meta analysis of 76 studies and they showed that the uh, adherence decreased with the frequency of regimen so it means if 72% of patient on one daily doses were adherent and it was just decreasing as the number of uh, dosing frequency was increasing so ultimately we see that the uh, patient four times daily the adherence was up to 51% the role of uh, technology yes it has a role uh, nowadays uh, especially during the covid when patients were not able to visit hospital so uh, all around the world we are using technology to communicate with the patient deliver their medication also giving them a reminder and some online clinics also were happening so this is also one way of uh, improving the the adherence and coming towards the end uh, some of the limitations or opportunities which i noticed during this uh, while preparing this presentation the lack of consistency in costing methodologies approaches uh, serves as a major limitation moving forward in cost analysis research actually the the cost uh, analysis it's not about just uh, having a cost that okay this is the cost of we are saving or losing the cost which comes it helps to make the policy the health policy not just i'm not talking about one treatment one patient treatment plan no about the uh, the the overall health policy of a disease so these uh, cost analysis will help us in that so this is what we have this opportunity for future to do this also limited data available for cost analysis in ophthalmology i can i could understand i could realize there is really a limited amount of data the cost evaluation studies contribute to policy making as i was saying and a multidisciplinary team may contribute to this type of research and the cost evaluation studies may have financial biases which is Uh, some of the studies which i found was done by some of these companies so we have to make sure that when we are evaluating such papers uh, we take out these biases or remove those papers from evaluation and to summarize my talk the lack of adherence can affect the treatment plan no matter how hard we are working to help the patient but if a patient doesn't take the medication properly intentionally or unintentionally the treatment plan will not be achieved non adherence can have a heavy burden or direct or indirect cost and utilizing intervention tools to improve medication adherence and also understanding about the research methodologies uh, to bring about these research uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, if you have any question i would be very happy to answer if i can you can share your experience or something about the medication adherence thank you very much I mean the daily pill boxes. No, we do, we don't, Doctor uh, Mohanad. We we don't have this box. No, Doctor, we don't have it. You suggest we should we should have something for. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. It, it has boxes of seven days. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good suggestion. Is we can have it. Hmm. Uh, any any questions? So we can uh, conclude the session. Thank you very much thank you very much for your time